Hello, the topic for today's presentation is biodiversity and climate change. It's about how warming is affecting the survival of all the beautiful birds and animals that share this beautiful planet, the blue marble, with us. First, let's go to a very recent report, the Living Planet Report, which came out towards the end of last year. And this actually points to a catastrophic two-thirds decline of the global population of uh, biodiversity in the last 50 years or so. Uh, and this is related to the same environmental destruction which is contributing to the emergence of uh, zoonotic diseases like uh, COVID-19. Then there is the IUCN Red List, which now has 1,28,918 species on the uh, red list on the verge of extinction and uh, 31 more species actually moved into the extinct uh, category and uh, unfortunately almost all the freshwater dolphins uh, are now threatened with extinction all over the world. Uh, polar bear which is one of my favorite animals has unfortunately emerged as one of the uh, faces of extinction uh, across the world. In the Arctic, uh, polar bears are increasingly under threat because the ice is literally melting and uh, they have to work that much harder uh, when the window of hunting their favorite uh, food, that's the seals, on sea ice uh, is decreasing. The polar bear is not the only animal in the Arctic facing an existential crisis. Uh, the red fox is moving into the territory of the Arctic fox and uh, because it's larger and a more uh, accomplished hunter, uh, it is actually threatening the survival of the Arctic foxes as well. The reindeer is another animal facing uh, an existential crisis. Uh, in June 2019, uh, when I was there in the Svalbard archipelago, about uh, 200 of these uh, Svalbard reindeer actually starved to death. And the reason was that it was raining and the rain was, uh, you know, once it freezes, into hard ice, uh, they, these animals are unable to dig through to reach the vegetation, unlike uh, the soft snow, and uh, that is causing big problems for them there. Uh, the ecosystem uh, effects across the Arctic have been well documented. Uh, it is uh, affecting all the smaller organisms, the, the copepods and the, and, and the insects, uh, as well as the uh, the two species of amphibians that uh, survive in the Arctic, the boreal chorus frog and the wood frog, and three species of fish which survive the eight month long freezing of the wetlands around uh, the Canadian Arctic. And this was in 2015 when I was part of uh, an expedition there uh, doing a lot of uh, studies on how climate change was affecting the, uh, the ecology of the region. So, uh, these amphibians have been around uh, on this planet uh, since before the dinosaurs and if they are losing out now, in fact 50% of all of them could be lost within this century. Uh, that's really a very bad sign for the health of the planet. Now, what is happening? Uh, in ecological terms, we refer to something called the Goldilocks principle where the environmental conditions, the bioclimatic envelope is just right for species to survive, but that is uh, slowly uh, changing. So as the climate warms, the geographic location of uh, these uh, envelopes will shift. And uh, because of that, species cannot survive in their current locations and then uh, they tend to migrate in search of uh, uh, the environmental conditions they they have evolved or adapted for. This has been seen in the southern hemisphere where uh, the purple sea archings, uh, zooplanktons and the whale shark have all been documented to be migrating southwards away from the equator and towards the poles and in the northern hemisphere uh, the blue argus butterfly, the pika and the setis warbler, these are all uh, terrestrial species which have been documented to be migrating uh, towards the north uh, from the equator towards the polar areas. There are of course uh, other changes and I'm quickly going to run through this. Uh, live fast and die small. This is uh, what has been 
used to describe. Uh, increasing temperatures have direct effects on individual organisms. There is increased uh, uh, rates of metabolism, respiration, reproduction, and because of that, they are becoming or more mature faster or, or reaching reproductive age faster uh, and when they are smaller. So this is causing body sizes to shrink in some populations and this has uh, an impact on the entire ecosystem. Uh, this is another condition that we are seeing about 99% uh, of uh, green sea turtles uh, born are now actually females. So as species are uh, shifting their ranges, it also uh, changes how they interact with uh, the communities around them. You know, they may find new species living uh, where in areas where they arrive, and uh, this kind of favors some species over others. Uh, some species which are adapted to very particular conditions are not able to survive. So whales are another species which are uh, losing out. Uh, their populations have been decreased by nearly 50% in just 50 years. Uh, we all have heard about how uh, warming affects the coral reefs. Uh, about 90% of the Great Barrier Reef uh, was wiped out a few years back. And uh, all the three mass bleaching events have actually happened in the last uh, 20 years or so. So what happens is when the water is too warm, the cor corals will expel the zooxanthellae, leaving in their tissues, and that turns the corals white, and uh, over a period of time causes them to die. Uh, another big uh, concern is, of course, that uh, the oceans are becoming more and more acidic, and that uh, causes many animals to uh, lose their shells, and uh, that actually disrupts the entire ecosystem. Deoxygenation is perhaps the most important issue facing sea animals today. Uh, we are seeing unprecedented levels of uh, deoxygenation across the world. Uh, these are the dead zones and uh, they are abundant now uh, in the coastal as well as open ocean areas. Uh, a lot of fisheries are located in these areas and uh, affects the food supply for a lot of people. Uh, the Messengers was a report uh, released during the week of uh, the Paris Agreement ne negotiations in 2015 and uh, this is very important uh, from the point of view of birds because birds are considered to be key indicator species of the environment. So some of the things that this report uh, revealed were that distribution shifts was happening among birds and there were uh, disrupted interactions between uh, predators and prey and there was also mismatches in the timing of breeding and food supply. So all of these are causing population declines in bird, uh, birds around the world. Uh, if you take care of birds, you take care of most of the environmental problems in the world. Uh, this is coming from uh, Thomas Lovejoy and uh, moving from the birds to bees. Uh, bees are of course vitally important to the health of the planet because they are so crucial for food production. And now climate change is affecting pollination by disrupting the synchronized timing of flower blooming and the timing at which bees pollinate. So these natural systems are being disrupted and that is going to cause us a lot of problems in the future. So the catastrophic loss of insects uh, could actually mean the collapse of uh, nature itself and uh, this is something we all need to really be worried about. Now let's go to another report that was published uh, in 2019. Uh, this is the Hindu Kusimala assessment. The ICI mod uh, actually reveal the extent of uh, vege vegetation change that is happening with large areas of grasslands, meadows, wetlands, uh, and permafrost, which are all disappearing from the Tibetan plateau. Why this is important is because this is one of the most biodiverse regions in the entire world with new discoveries still taking place. Uh, this region has four global biodiversity hotspots and uh, the largest reserves of ice outside the polar regions with 240 million people dependent uh, directly uh, on the 
on the Hindukus Himalayas for their lives and livelihoods and 1.9 billion uh, dependent uh, on these areas uh, for their water, food and energy. This also has about 330 imported bird areas. So all of these habitats, about 87% of them are likely to be lost by 2100. The uh, most uh, critical finding of course is that about two thirds of uh, the eastern Himalayan glaciers are likely to vanish. Now the northeast region represents one of the most biodiverse in, in, in India and uh, these glaciers feed the rivers and they are very vital for, uh, for people and biodiversity of the region. So the biodiversity of the eastern Himalayan region uh, has uh, 163 globally threatened species. Uh, as well as 45 species of mammals, 50 of birds, 17 reptiles, 12 amphibians. Uh, all of these are threatened and majority of them are not found elsewhere. So all of these is under threat because of warming. Uh, let's look at a few of the species uh, per, uh, found in the eastern Himalayan region. Uh, the rhinos, the, most the projected disruption of the monsoons could uh, deplete the grasslands and impact its uh, survival in the floodplains of uh, the Brahmaputra Valley in Assam uh, as well as parts of UP, West Bengal and Nepal where they are found. Uh, similarly elephants, uh, they are very sensitive to high temperatures and uh, they need a lot of water and food. So vegetation change and then uh, the proliferation of invasive uh, uh, species over grasslands, all of these uh, have been documented and these are creating food shortages and bringing elephants uh, into conflict with uh, humans as well as uh, uh, makes them more vulnerable to poaching. Uh, let's talk about the national animal. Uh, apex predators like the tiger are especially vulnerable because they do not have uh, alternative uh, habitats to migrate. Uh, then precipitation change also could change the nature of the remaining tiger habitats in India. Uh, now, for example, if a grassland uh, disappears from one area, the deer feeding there could uh, migrate to uh, an area of abundance, but the tiger could not follow the deer because there would be another tiger possibly living there because they are, these big cats are highly territorial. So this could lead to a clash. So that is a big problem for the tigers as well. Uh, sea level rise of course is threatening the Sundarbans tiger habitat and this uh, may be uh, already be gone in the next 50 years or so. In Bhutan the tigers are going up uh, the mountains, they are they're increasing their ra range in altitude uh, but however that is threatening the survival of another uh, big cat that's a snow leopard and uh, because up in the hills they are competing for the same food that's the mountain goats and uh, uh, that will likely to further endanger the snow leopards. So does biodiversity matter for humans? Of course it does because we will face severe threat in terms of food security uh, due to the loss of biodiversity. Uh, to summarize, nature is declining. Um, with uh, global populations of biodiversity gone, gone, gone down by 68% since 1970. There's no doubt that we are the cause and there's no doubt that we need nature. And also there is no doubt that we can restore nature. Let's uh, look at how uh, and what uh, we are doing to do that. Uh, meanwhile, if anybody is interested in learning more about how biodiversity and climate change interactions take place, uh, please read this book, The Climate Abundant. I wrote the chapter on the biodiversity impacts here. The UN Convention on Biological Diversity last year came out with the Global Biodiversity Outlook 5, which listed uh, eight transformative changes that are required to arrest the catastrophic decline of biodiversity. And these include the uh, conserving intact ecosystems and restoring degraded ones and then switching over to sustainable agriculture, food, uh, fishery systems, uh, changing to green infrastructure in cities uh, as well as a one health approach where uh, we take healthy ecosystems and human health as one. 
So these are some of the things that we need to take uh, up within the next 10 years. Uh, the reason I put the poster from uh, World Wildlife Day here because I think uh, this is very uh, crucial to understand that uh, indigenous people are key to conserving the biodiversity around them and the health of the planet as well as uh, uh, sustaining this biodiversity heritage depends on people who have lived with the biodiversity around them for millennia before the word sustainable was coined. So yes, uh, the people, the indigenous communities of the world are key uh, to help us protect the biodiversity. Why? Because biodiversity for indigenous people is everything. It uh, represents the food, water, uh, our breath, everything we do. I myself belong to the indigenous Taya home community of Assam and uh, our culture and traditions are in fact intertwined with the uh, natural heritage around us. So this year on 22nd of May when we celebrated the World Biodiversity Day, uh, the slogan was we are part of the solution and that places the onus of saving biodiversity on human beings and it is of course part of the theme uh, of last year which uh, was our solutions are in nature. Uh, the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration launch, uh, to be launched on World Environment Day this year uh, will foc we'll focus on recovering of this uh, degraded areas. In fact, the key words uh, for the next 10 years that you will be hearing is restoration and rewilding. Uh, this is not the first uh, decade uh, focused on biodiversity. We had 10 years from 2011 to 2020 uh, uh, where the IG biodiversity targets uh, actually fail uh, to achieve the targets uh, to protect biodiversity. But uh, this next decade probably with the correct focus represents the last chance human beings have to arrest the, the catastrophic loss of biodiversity. And uh, restoration has been the uh, connecting theme around uh, Earth Day 2021 as well as uh, World Environment Day uh, coming up in a few days. Uh, the zero draft for the post 2020 global biodiversity framework which was supposed to be published last year but uh, uh, it was postponed and uh, once rati ratified the countries of the world have agreed to declare at least 30 percent of the land and 30 percent of uh, seas as protected areas so that will go a long way uh, in recovering or restoring areas degraded areas and creating new protected areas for conserving biodiversity The first uh, World Rewilding Day was observed on 28 March this year and rewilding means helping nature heal itself. It's about restoring the wave of life uh, and this is something that uh, we are all going to be hearing more and more in the coming days. So can we do it? Yeah, well, one man has shown us that we can. Uh, he spent over 30 years without the world knowing anything about his mission of greening a barren sandbar in the middle of the Brahmaputra. The lush jungle now uh, is home to tigers and elephants and deers and birds. So Jada Payang created a model of rewilding and restoration before the world even started talking about it 40 years later. He is an inspiration, is a friend of mine and I think if uh, he can do it alone, together we can do a lot lot more so I'm going to end this presentation with uh, a quote by James Lovelock and uh, essentially it means that uh, we are not trying to save the planet the planet will look after itself we are only trying to save ourselves thank you